Welcome to the S18 versus V11 versus Gateway X Ultimate Showdown episode. Oh, here we go again, yeah. What are you doing? Shopping for electric unicycles at erides.com. But they service the UK and Europe. So? You live in America. Here. Well, I like them. They've got friendly customer service, great selection of EVs, and two year warranty. Yeah, but we shop at- And they're not just a dealer, you know. They're real EV riders. You know, enthusiasts. Well, you're not British, and that accent you're doing there, it sucks. Yeah. Well, plenty of our subscribers live there. Is that a pipe in your hand? Nope. Give me the pipe. Toby! Click the link below for a proper discount on your erides.com purchase when you use the promo code EVX. And as they say, ride with erides. Benches in my kitchen with too much heat. She got my flapjack slipping. No matter what I do, she wanna scramble eggs. So yeah, with the V11 you also have a negative chamber. So technically that's progressive. One of the big changes they did make <laughs> from the pre-production model till now. So there you go. So I guess in this uh, video we have two progressive systems and one linear. So let's just jump right back to that. So the, the one linear system um, is the Gotway X. And what that's going to give you basically is once you have your air filled up, you just have one pressure up and down. So when the hammer travels, it travels up and down at the same pace, basically. Now with the progressive system, you're gonna have constant pressure going all the way down so you get towards the bottom, and then you're gonna have an exponential ramp up in pressure. Um, so what that's really gonna do is just like ease you into the bottom end of your system, and then ease you back out of it. Now with the S18, since you're using a mountain bike suspension system, you have a little more nuance to it. You have a rebound knob at the top, I mean, you also have the sort of like on off switch there. To be honest, I don't really know that you'd really need that other than I think I've stated before, if you were deciding to go up a large hill, you don't really need your suspension going up it, so you could lock it off real quick. But the negative air chamber and the rebound control are the two biggest things that'll give you the nicest ride possible when it comes to a suspension system. Jumping over to the V11, we have a positive air chamber and a negative air chamber. What that's gonna allow you to do is, as we've said before, give you a more compounded pressure on the way down to sort of ease you in and ease you out of that extent of the travel. In the past, when I've made other videos, I've talked about the fact that you're gonna basically have to tune the suspension not only to yourself, but also to the type of terrain you ride most. So if you're gonna be a city rider with any of these wheels, you're gonna wanna tune it a little bit on the lighter side of what's possible. And if you're someone who wants to go out and do massive jumps, um, you're gonna wanna tune it on a bit of the more dense, the heavier side of the pressure you can put inside of it. So each of these unicycles has their own different motor. So the Kingsong S18 has a run-of-the-mill 2200 watt motor, um, something that they would probably buy from their typical manufacturer of their motors. Uh, then we have the InMotion V11, which is toted to be a custom 2200 watt motor. And then we finally have the Gotway X, which is a whopping 3500 watt motor. That being the big boy in the group, we can get into in a second what that means, but that's sort of the spectrum of each of those motors. I mean, it's just amazing. I'm already going 30 miles an hour. If we're honest, 
This is one of the reasons why the V11 is a better motor. The stopping power on this is just typical for an 18 inch King Song. So there's a lot to be desired as far as when you're at top speed, how easy can you stop or how quickly can you stop? The V11 feels like it's got an equal and opposite power out and, and power in. So when you are going 30 miles an hour and you're like, oh crap, I gotta stop so fast, it can do it. And you don't feel like it's struggling. I don't know if the audio came through, but just now on this end, when I was stopping just there, it felt like at the very end it was struggling. Like if I just give it a nice little crank more, that would be the end of that motor. Um, you know, I could try it again and see if I can capture it better for you. So hopefully you can hear that. That's the motor kind of struggling really hard to do its job. Something that I've experienced with many unicycles, but you know, hoping, well, I guess I'm just spoiled by the V11 slightly, uh, that this is a little disappointing to me. All right guys, so I feel like one of the bigger points I wanna focus on in this video is also the acceleration and the braking on these vehicles. Uh, right now I've got the Gotway X out here. I'm out here in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So we're gonna put it through the paces and kind of go back and forth right here and just see how well I can take off and how well I can brake. I feel like braking is a big thing for me. And if you remember from my V11 video, the V11 had really good braking. Uh, you know, not the strongest motor on the planet, but it actually gives you a lot of good power delivery in and out. So hopefully this can keep up, but uh, we'll see. All right, so I got my man Relaxurbation over here, AKA Law. Law. Hello, hello. <laughs> what is that all about? What is oh, that? So it used to be uh, laxturbation, then eventually got hacked by Russians, and then after that, it just turned into relaxturbation. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we just did a, some acceleration tests uh, with the X over here, and I felt like it was pretty heavy. I felt like it was really kind of difficult to stop this thing. It was kind of like you really felt that it was. It was doing its job. It wasn't struggling, but you could tell that there's no quick stop in this beast, right? Right. Yeah, it's definitely on the chunkier side. Uh, what I did notice was the uh, with it having the hollow hollow bore motor, you end up having the smoother acceleration. You're still not really able to overpower it because it's got a stupid powerful motor. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you end up having that little bit of extra rim weight, which would slow down the braking and acceleration. But it still felt really good. Yeah, you're not going to make any quick stops with this guy. So, you know, if you're full sending it and there's something that pulls out of nowhere, you might be in a little trouble. But uh, overall, it's, it's gonna handle you, it's gonna stop you. And I tried to sort of over torque it at the end there and I couldn't really get it to beep, so that's a good sign. I mean, I, I expect that, right? Like the MSP high right. torque was similar scenario. Yeah. So MSP high torque, definitely it felt like you can get that faster acceleration with the smaller center of gravity on the mm. wheel. But at the same time, it's it felt good. No wobbles, no real uh, real risk of issue. Right, and I have it on medium mode right now for what it's worth, so. But anyways, that's the acceleration and braking test. Yes. All right, a little stair jump action from Law. Let's see what happens. Whoa. I it out. Yeah, of course you did. <laughs> that's crazy, man, right? Now let's talk a little bit about the pump system for each of these wheels. For the King Song S18 and the V11, you basically have the same type of pump and you could equally go out and buy another replacement pump like it on Amazon. But for the Gotway X, you kind of have this massive, massive <laughs> pump that's about waist high. The downside of that is if you're in the field and you need to pump up, I don't foresee you taking this thing with you on your journey. Uh, whereas the S18 and the V11, 
those are just you know handheld pumps that you can just shove into your backpack or, or your car or wherever you're going. So that's sort of like a big difference between those three pumps. If you were out and something were to happen somehow where the air was let out of your Gotway X, that would be the one most that you would probably need to fill up. So if something were to happen, the Gotway X is least likely for you to be able to just ride it home. So of course, the battery is a big thing on each of these wheels. And when I say a big thing, I mean it's a big talking point. For the S18, we have the smallest battery. <laughs> to be honest, it was really weird when this wheel came out because everybody had been seeing a progression of battery size and it was like a big kind of like whammo, we're going backwards in the game. But I know why they did it. But anyways, they have an 1100 watt hour battery, I think, I think it's like 1110. Then of course the V11 has a 1500 watt hour battery. If you remember back in the day, they had 14 and then just to like rub it in King Song's face or something, they made it to 15. Um, and then finally we have the big boy of the group. Of course, as always, the Gotway. It has 2700 watt hours. That is sufficient if you're gonna be doing like an all day ride. Trust me, you're gonna be laughing at the guys who are having to charge all the time. What kind of battery do you need with the suspension wheel? I mean, it kind of comes down to your use case, but for me, the S18's smaller battery allow them to have that very unique and very upfront design. But it also, after riding a lot, gave you the ability to really do what I think that wheel was designed for. You know, jumping around and doing some more sort of uh, dynamic moves in your urban environment that aren't just the typical just slow zombie ride situation. So if you're trying to find a suspension wheel that's just to become a daily commuter, S18 would be fine, but you're gonna be wanting a little bit when it comes to battery. But again, that just depends on how far you're going. Now with the V11, we've got the 1500 watt hour battery. That's pretty closely akin to the previous generation King Song 16X. That was a pretty good wheel. I had that wheel, um, I felt like I was getting like 30 to 40 miles range out of that. So um, the V11 is gonna be a good city commuter wheel and it's gonna give you enough battery to commute around a city and allow you to bypass the subway or the tube or whatever you guys call it in your country. And finally, the Gotway X. So the X, like we said, is the big boy of the group. It's got the massive battery on there. Of course, that's gonna give you whatever you need to commute around. And in fact, because of the weight of that wheel and how much battery is in it, you're not getting on the subway or a bus or whatever. It's just not happening. Okay, so comparing all three of these wheels and each of the little things that they have to offer, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to sort of like divulge my final thoughts and sort of declare a winner, if you will. But still, you should take this as a video to help you decide which electric unicycle, or I should say which suspension electric unicycle is best for you. So for me, there is a clear winner. And it's unexpected and quite frankly kind of annoying. Um, but for me, the overall winner, it's gonna get the crowning glory as the best suspension wheel of 2020. I can't believe I'm saying this. Is the Kingsong S18. Here's why. It's got decent enough range, got really good design, got a lift sensor, got a decent handle, even though I, I know I don't like the fancy handles. Got a great headlight, but most of all, it did suspension right. The Kingsong S18, unlike the other two suspension wheels, was a wheel completely and utterly focused on suspension. Now, maybe that's not what you need in your life, but if we're talking about what is the best suspension wheel of 2020, it's the S18, because that suspension has all the little knobs and nuance that you want and need for the use case of having this unicycle. But really, the S18 shines and was made for going off-road and onto the dirt bike track and doing all kinds of mobbing around and more technical riding. So for that, it has all of the means to do that. Even the side pads that are on the side of that thing have been ergonomically shaped to help you gain lift 
and do whatever you need to do with that thing. So for me, it kind of ticks all the boxes for the best suspension wheel. But that also means that it is lacking in certain areas that make it not great for other things, like uh, the things we already said, like it's not that fast and the range is not great. I mean, it's pretty good, but it, it's not great. All right, that wraps it up, guys, for this epic three-wheel adventure. Um, if you like the video, give it a like down below. That'll really help me out. And if you are not subscribed, go ahead and consider subscribing. And if you do, click the notification bell because that'll let you know when I put out more content for you guys. And those are all my final thoughts. I hope you enjoyed the video. As I always say, keep riding, never stop. Yeah, I have a nervous habit. I play with cards all the time. Well, deck of cards. I used to do magic when I was a kid. I was super into it, you know? That was like my whole life. And then I found EUCs as an adult. <laughs> stop, wa stop watching. This is what I do when I'm thinking of content. I sit around and I like mess with the cards like this. Three. Three of hearts. Three of hearts right in the middle. And now she's back. <laughs>